Raising a bottle lamb can both be challenging and rewarding. Stick around for a few minutes and I'm gonna show you some basic lamb care tips. As with everything, there's always a different way, but I'm gonna show you how I do it. Before I go any further, I'd love for you to take this opportunity to go ahead and hit that subscribe button. We're just a small family farm here in Southern Maine and we'd love to have you follow along with us. There are lots of reasons why you could end up with a bottle lamb. It's very important that initially that lamb gets dried off and is warm. From there, you're gonna to need to get colostrum into that lamb. If you can get colostrum from the mother, that's great. If not, you should have some on. You've got 24 hours to get colostrum into that baby and you can pick it up at your feed store. Although mama's colostrum is always best. I usually like to bring my newborn bottle lambs in the house for about a week and that way I can keep an eye on it. And because the feedings are so close together, I don't have to go very far and it just makes it easier all around for everybody. You can get puppy pads. What we usually do is put diapers or pull-ups on the lamb, cut a little hole for the, for the tail and that saves a lot of cleanup. Ultimately, we want to get that lamb back out with the flock and back outside. So after about a week, uh, that lamb will go into a warming box. Let's go over some basics for feeding your lamb. So the first two days, four ounces every four hours, colostrum. After two days, you want to give it four to six ounces every four hours. And this will be day three through day seven. Depending upon the size of the lamb, you can increase it a little bit, but not too much. If you allow it to, a lamb will drink too much. So you measure out the dose and don't give any extra. I've seen a lot of different videos and people demonstrating how to feed lambs, but you want that lamb to be standing on its own. You don't want to have it over your knee. You don't want to be cradling it like a baby. What I usually do is have that lamb in between my legs and then hold its head with my left hand because I'm right-handed and put my finger in its mouth and stick the bottle nipple in its, in its mouth. And that lamb's gonna to wanna to squiggle and probably lay down but you need to keep that lamb standing and the reason behind that is because you don't want that lamb to get a clot in its lung so just remember lambs don't know when to stop drinking and they're going to drink too fast you as the shepherd are responsible to make sure that lamb does not get too much food if you overfeed it two things can happen number one they can get the scours which is diarrhea and number two they can get so much liquid in their belly that it actually goes back into the rumen which isn't developed yet and then you've got bloat which will make them sick and they won't want to eat and then you've got another whole host of problems you want to make sure that when the lamb is getting milk out of the nipple they're not getting too much too fast that can cause them to what they call aspiring and you get milk in the lungs and that can lead to pneumonia just remember you're better to underfeed than overfeed it's easier to prevent than it is to cure you want to make sure that you don't give electrolytes mixed in with the milk because that'll prevent absorption of, of nutrients you're better off to give a dose of electrolytes and then wait an hour or two and then give milk. What's worked for me in the past is at this first sign of scouring, you hold, you pull back on the milk. So you stop giving milk, give electrolytes, and you can give a little bit of Pepto-Bismol. After a week, I move the lamb to a warming box with hay and they will start nibbling on that pretty much immediately. What you don't want to do is give alfalfa because that'll cause bloat. And keep in mind, they're not going to eat a lot of that hay, but it's good for them to start nibbling. I usually start introducing creep feed around week three. Generally, when I mix up the milk, I mix it up in the morning and, and make enough for the whole day. So it's like one cup of milk replacer to 16 ounces of water, and then I just warm it up each time. Make sure that after every feeding, you clean out the bottle, the nipple, and that any unused milk is quickly refrigerated, or if it's left out, you throw it out and start over again because dirty equipment can cause scours. One thing I forgot to mention is the, the navel, the, the umbilical cord uh, usually has a little bit hanging off it, so that should have been treated with iodine in, initially, but keep an eye on it and make sure the navel's not getting red or um, distended. A navel infection will quickly spread throughout the whole body and that could be detrimental to your lamb. Because I live in southern Maine and the soil is pretty deficient in selenium, I always give a selenium boost initially upon birth. It doesn't matter if it's a bottle lamb or the mother's taking care of it, I always give them selenium. I have had stiff lamb disease here before and I will never allow that to happen again. So it's cheap insurance in my mind to just give them selenium immediately upon birth. I hope this video has been helpful to those of you starting out with lambs. And if you have any questions or comments, please put them down below. And once again, thanks for watching and we'll talk to you next time.